Thank you, sir. Hey, hey guys, did you did you bring toys today? Yeah. What'd you bring? This, this, this. Very nice. Did you find anything for yourself? Yeah. What'd you find? This. Oh, that's cute. More things also. Well, happy sharing day. <laughs> Well, tell me your name. Uh, Carol Hoshizaki. And uh, why did you come today? Um, mostly to sort of get rid of a few things. <laughs> um, there's always, I'm, I'm a scavenger by heart. So I, there are a lot of things that I find and then I realize I don't need or I can't use. So I bring them here. So are you looking to get something in return? Not really. Not really. That's uh, pretty hard. I've got hardy. more than enough stuff. So <laughs> yeah, I have. I have an aunt who gave me 40 boxes of yarn. So I'm still working wow. through that. And who is it that you think will come to collect your stuff? Who's who, what? Oh, anybody population? who's a crafter. Oh, it's knitters, a crafter. Yeah, knitters, yarn people, needlework of any sort. It's this isn't a, a socio-economic thing. It's a anybody and everything thing. Is that how you see this yeah. event? Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. Thanks. All right. What do you want to know? Uh, Rennie, how does sharing in your native country differ from sharing in America? Ah. Well, you got two minutes. Uh, two minutes. All right. So my, my family's originally from India. Um, I was born there and my parents, uh, parents lived there. My husband actually lived there as well. So uh, in India, sharing is... There's things that are just as a given shared, you know, food, um, good, you know, you hand me downs because we have extended families, things come down, you know, <laughs> toys and clothes and all of that. But I think in general, at least when I was growing up, there wasn't so much of this material spirit. So in that sense, there wasn't that much stuff. So what was handed down was very treasured and very special. Um, when I, you know, turned, I think it was 11, my grandmother called me aside and she gave me this special topaz stone that had been in her family and she had it set in silver and she gave it to me as, as a gift for like sort of coming of age sort of gift. And so we have these heirlooms of things that came through the family. Um, wow. So I guess in that way, it's, it's similar to the more traditional ways that people have lived here and in you know in Europe um, and I'm but I'm really gratified to see that this sort of sharing is happening that people are ready to do this and um, and you know you don't see this a lot of places I think anymore and so how do you how do you invite the, the quote-unquote people who really need to benefit from the stuff here how, yeah. how do you get those people here that is a difficult question and I'm open to suggestions absolutely um, you know you know you put out the word free and some people in inherently might stay away from that and you know they don't want to take charity and that sort of thing but I really would just hope that you know as the word gets out and you know and, um, you know we live in a very diverse community so I hope that the people who really need it are coming here and that they'll you know, They'll take what they need and, you know, and not feel obligated to bring something because I think the people who have more are ready to give. So there are uh, churches that have bazaars and flea markets and stuff. Have yeah. you been able to find those connections to combine forces? Working on them. We are. That would, that's a really good suggestion, and I think I think that is something that's that's a next step. Um, you know, uh, when the stuff is left over here, we try to make sure it goes to a useful place. We've been able to um, take some of the things from here and send them to, you know, fundraisers and other things like that. So that sort of gets a second chance to get to people who might need it. Thanks a lot for the event. <laughs> okay, ma'am, what is your name? Connie, Connie Veal. Connie Veal, why did you come here today? Um, I got an email from um, a friend, I guess, um, crafting, and so I thought, well, I'm going to start my cookie business. This oh. is a good place to start. Nice. What uh, What is your 
thought about sharing in, the, in Christmas time? Do you have a perspective on giving and taking? Oh, I give a lot of my cookies away. I, I always <laughs> tell my husband, no, you can't touch these because they're cookie gifts. But this year, I'm going to start my business. Ooh, that's a pretty one. Huh? <laughs> you want to see? Uh, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> that's, lo that's lovely, but it's not my color. <laughs> Ma'am, you're here to distribute, huh? Is that the word? That's an interesting word. You're putting some stuff out for the community? Yeah, but I'm also I'm also receiving. You are? Yeah. Well, how do you do that when you're giving? How does that work? You know, it's I just come from a culture that we do this. Nice. <laughs> and that culture is what? What culture? Brazil. Brazil? Yeah, we do this. Yeah. Nice. I'm doing some uh, video of people who come and, and try and get a story from folks. Oh, okay. So how does it differ in Brazil versus in America, the sharing? Uh, usually it starts with the family. Uh. So uh, you, if you have a kid, Usually you save the, the, the clothing, so then the next generation will have, or you distribute to your cousins and aunts. And <laughs> so around the family. Okay. And then it extends also to friends. And if you're connected to a community or a spiritual community or um, I don't know a, a kind of community that you interact with other generations, usually people just have this attitude of. Um, holding whatever they have and then they distribute. Sometimes you even give to a friend that knows another friend that needs. So, uh, um, interesting. It's, it's natural. <laughs> it it's happens. Uh, but it's not natural in a capitalist society because we have to go buy the stuff. So it's not natural in that sense, right? Yeah. Our society is about purchase. And plus, there in Brazil, we can't. We don't have that policy about returning the merchandise <laughs> right. once you have it. It's so yours. we think twice before we buy it. Ah. <laughs> you can't return it. So, Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> oh, my name is Victoria Armigo. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Tell me why you're here and how you feel about sharing in these holiday times. Oh my God, sharing. Yeah. Sharing is the new economy. Wow, well said. Okay. What did you bring to share? I brought myself, <laughs> my infinite love. The goddess? Um, I brought vegetables, okay. which I bring always. I brought uh, printed up flyers. I brought a gift. Wow. I brought tables. I brought tablecloths, <laughs> I brought paper bags, I brought eggs. Wow. I have my own chicken, so I always bring eggs to the garden share. So what did you, what were you looking to get in return, if anything? There, it's not about a return, it's about a giveaway. The whole, it's an exercise in letting go. Uh, I have more than I need. Okay. In all honesty, my life is abundant. It's appropriate for me to share with others that that's extra. It's easy. So in giving, you're getting. The act of giving is getting it all at once. It's a holistic thing, right? It's not about getting. It's about letting go. Oh, but we're human beings. By we, nature, we're I looking to human, get something back. I, I am a human being. I acknowledge I'm a human being. And Rosalinda always brings me cut flowers. <laughs> just for me that she won't let anybody else have. My name is Barbara. Barbara Weinstein. Barbara, why did you come here today? I came here today because I wanted to... Um, experience the expo event and because I, I have been involved in transition locally for some time but I haven't been able to come to the sharing events as often as I would like and so I'm delighted to be here today. What is the difference between uh, your parents world and parents ideas of sharing versus this event today? There a, a seems to be a fairly big evolution here between those two generations? It's an interesting question. <laughs> um, 
I think in a way nowadays we're kind of more conscious about sharing being something that we should be doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whereas I think in my parents' generation and before, it was just something that you did. It was just part of life. <laughs> and so you weren't conscious. If you went and borrowed some eggs from the neighbor, you just went and borrowed some eggs from the neighbor. You didn't think about that you were doing it as, a, as an activity <laughs> or as a political statement or as a social statement. Right. But having said that, it's wonderful in whatever way it's done. <laughs> Do you also find yourself bartering stuff, like getting something for getting something in return? That process as well? Uh, I am traditionally more comfortable with sharing and giving and um, I tr- have not been as comfortable in essence asking other people for things <laughs> and I know that's an important step to go right. in order to embrace the real sharing so I am in the process of getting better on that. <laughs> but at this point, I wouldn't say that I really engage in barter. Because I'm more likely simply to give something to somebody. Tell, uh, tell us your name. Uh, I'm Anna. Anna. And why did you come today? Uh, well, I have been to a couple of the garden shares, and I love being able to share surplus of things that I have and find out what other people are doing and maybe pick up a couple things for my house. What would you what would you tend to look for in terms of picking up something for you here? Uh, what would be useful? Well, for example, uh, my chickens ate my kale. So <laughs> I have no kale in my garden, but someone else brought a big tub full of kale and so now I have kale to wow. take home and de- put in my dehydrator. And uh, I also just started knitting again recently, so I picked up a couple patterns of knitting. Interesting. Yeah. How do you think your parents would interact with this crowd in this program today? Would they understand it? Um, Yeah, we're from Minnesota. And Minnesota (laughs) is all about um, cooperative, sharing, community working together to get through the winter, uh, uh, get through the hard times, things like that, and so they would totally understand this. Interesting. Yeah, well, we, we've had farmers markets going continuously since the 1800s in Minnesota, so well, this, this, is, this is normal to me. This isn't really a farmer's market, no, though. No, it's this is not. A free, but a the free farmers share. have all done a lot of the sharing and cooperative work together, uh, things yeah. like that. And so I grew up with that's how neighbors take care of each other, how communities take care of each other. Do you think that a capitalist system will put up with a sharing economy? I mean, I, is there a conflict there to you? I don't think there's the conflict. Uh, that uh, some of the transition people think there is. Um, I'm very strongly capitalist. I'm also very much part of the open source programming movement and very much into the sharing economy. So it's, I think they work well together. Uh, They uh, care for different needs. They, they, They fill different niches. And both sides, I think, are needed. But some of these uh, uh, efforts don't even have the transition label on it, which is absolutely fine. If we're spreading the ethic, we don't need the label. If they want to know more about transition and use the label, well, that's good too. Whatever works for them. So the ritual would be getting together regularly. That's part of ritual. Mm -hmm. And celebration of each Absolutely. other and needs and being able to help each other that's a ritual component right absolutely else, building the else? community right exactly. so that we know each other there are friendships here that i don't think existed three to five years ago transition palo alto has been blossoming in about the last three years somebody told me that you don't make good new friends after 40. And that may be the truth for some people. I don't think this person was speaking incorrectly, but speaking from their experience, it was probably the truth. It is absolutely 
not a given. It is not an absolute truth. <laughs> we have people in transition of all ages, plenty of people over 40, plenty of people over 60, and they have friends they did not have three <laughs> years ago. And they have somebody they can go to for wisdom and sharing and occasionally help. 